under basic conditions, an isomer of any carbohydrate molecule can transform into a different isomer of that same carbohydrate molecule. And this reaction is commonly known as the isomerization of carbohydrates under basic conditions. Now, to see exactly what we mean by this and to explore this reaction even further, let's take our example, the D-glucose. And let's try to convert the D-glucose into other isomers via this reaction. Now, D-glucose falls into a category of carbohydrates known as aldohexose. And there exist 16 stereoisomers of aldohexose, with our D-glucose molecule being only one of those 16 stereoisomers. Now, under basic conditions, our D-glucose can transform, it can basically undergo this isomerization reaction to form the D-mannose or the D-fructose. And in this lecture, we're going to focus on the isomerization of D-glucose into the D-mannose molecule. In the next lecture, we're going to focus on the isomerization reaction of D-glucose into our D-fructose. Now, we know that any cyclic molecule, any cyclic carbohydrate exists in equilibrium with its open chain counterpart. And it's the cyclic version of the carbohydrate that predominates. And so that means we have to begin with the cyclic version of D-glucose. So there are two cyclic versions of D-glucose. We have the alpha anomer and the beta anomer. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the alpha anomer, but we can replace the alpha anomer with the beta anomer and nothing will change. So the only thing that changes if we replace the alpha with beta is in the alpha case, the hydroxide points downward. In the beta case, this hydroxide would point upward. So we begin with the alpha D glucopyranose, our cyclic version of the glucose molecule. Now in step number one, we basically take a water molecule and the water molecule protonates this oxygen, placing a positive charge on the oxygen, creating this protonated version of the alpha D glucopyranose. So let's call this molecule A. Now, when we form this molecule, when we place the positive charge on the oxygen, what that basically does is, in the second step, because the oxygen is electronegative, it will pull away this bond, breaking the bond, placing the electrons onto this oxygen, forming this resonance-stabilized intermediate where we have the delocalization of positive charge between this carbon and this oxygen here. Now, in the third step, we basically have the hydroxide molecule that is formed in the second step basically acts to deprotonate the H atom on this oxygen forming the open straight chain version of the glucose molecule. So this is the cyclic version of the glucose molecule and this is our open straight chain version of our D-glucose molecule. Now we can also write our molecule not using our three-dimensional uh, image but by using our two-dimensional Fisher projection which basically looks something like this. So we see that the cyclic version of D-glucose, specifically alpha D-glucopyranose, will equilibrate with its open straight chain counterpart. And it's this open straight chain molecule that will basically undergo a series of steps, a series of reactions to produce the final version, our D-mannose molecule. So let's begin with B. So let's call this open straight chain molecule B and let's use this version here. So we have this molecule and in the presence of a base, this base, let's suppose our base is hydroxide for instance, the base can basically deprotonate an alpha hydrogen. So this is an aldehyde, it's a carbonyl group and the carbonyl group will contain an acidic alpha hydrogen, this hydrogen here, which is basically this H atom here. So let's rewrite our H atom by using the purple color. So basically the hydroxide deprotonates this alpha 
purple H atom to form a resonance stabilized intermediate, the enolate intermediate ion that contains the delocalization of negative charge between this carbon atom. But if the pi bond for, or if these two electrons and the carbon form a pi bond here, that will displace this pi bond, placing our negative charge onto this oxygen. So we have the delocalization of our charge among the carbon as well as this oxygen. Now, in the next step, two things can take place. So we have the water molecule that was formed in this step. When this hydroxide deprotonates this alpha H atom, we form the water molecule. In the next step, this water molecule can basically reprotonate this same carbon. So these two electrons can grab this same H atom. But if these two electrons grab the H atom from the top side, then if the top side addition reaction takes place, the H will go on the top and will reform this reactant B. But if these two electrons instead grab the H from the bottom, that will basically place our hydroxide on the top and the H will point to the bottom. So if the bottom side addition reaction takes place, the H will end up pointing to the bottom and the hydroxide will end up pointing to the top, which is the opposite stereochemistry of this molecule, molecule B. And this molecule will now lead to our alpha D manopyranase, the cyclic version of the D manose molecule. So basically, once we form this molecule, which is basically almost the same as this molecule, the only difference is the stereochemistry of this chiral, car uh, chiral carbon here, the next step will basically be exactly the same as these three steps here. So we basically want to take the straight chain version of our d mannose and form our um, cyclic version of that same molecule. So basically this is our straight chain version of our D mannose molecule. So let's go on to form the cyclic version however. So in the next step we have a water molecule that basically acts to protonate or actually yeah so the water molecule acts to protonate this oxygen to form this resin stabilized intermediate where we have the delocalization of positive charge among this carbon here and this oxygen atom here so in the next step we have this oxygen acting as a nucleophile attacking this carbon here placing the pi bond onto this oxygen removing the positive charge from this oxygen removing the positive charge from this carbon but placing a positive charge on this oxygen here and so in the final step a hydroxide molecule that is formed in this step can now deprotonate this oxygen to form the cyclic version of our D mannose molecule the alpha D mannopyranose so notice that we can easily uh, interconvert between our alpha D glucopyranose and our alpha D manopyranose as long as we have that base. The base plays the role of deprotonating our alpha hydrogen that can then produce either our open straight chain D mannose or if we have a top side we go back and produce our open straight chain D glucose. So we have an equilibrium reaction taking place between our alpha gluc or our um, D glucose and our D mannose. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to discuss how we can also undergo an isomerization reaction in which D-glucose basically transforms into our D-fructose and there exists an equilibrium between these isomers.